Talk Session Series, The Revolution Will Be Digitized. session series the revolution will be digitized families need to be kept abreast of topics that's going on i feel Absolutely. like there are behind the scene discussions that only certain people in america know what's going on mm -hmm. and then there are other people who find out when it's too late we are in a generation that's had you know the the highest number of degrees we're the most educated generation in history yes yet this generation but yet we don't have you know we're, we're locked out of a job we've been displaced by you know uh the great recession mm -hmm. a lot of us are not buying homes and we thought we did everything that was right real talk session series the revolution will be digitized Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Taryn Morgan, the founder and creative director of the Real Talk Session Series. And today I am here with another great episode, one that is crucial, especially when it comes to us thinking about the future. Oftentimes we think that we're planning effectively for the future, but we're not. We don't think about what work's gonna look like in five, 10 years. We don't think about what the education system's gonna look like in 10 years, 20 years, et cetera. So today I have the pleasure of being with one of the groups that are doing the work to ensure that we're having a positive future, which is the Future Wise Group. How are you both doing today? Hi, Taryn. How are you? Taryn, yeah, welcome. Yes, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Um, can you both really quickly introduce yourselves and then also talk about your specific areas of expertise? Okay. Well, I am Shay Richburg Koch. I am the co-founder and CEO of FamilyCon, which is a production company. Uh, we focus on conventions and expos that take place annually, and it's geared towards families. Um, and the co-founder of FutureWise Group. Okay. Nice. Hi, I'm Rolvin Koch. I'm the founder and CEO of FutureWise Group. I'm also the executive producer of uh, Surviving the Future of Work podcast, and I work for a large global organization, that, and I'm responsible for uh, making sure that the organizations are agile, and I'm building the capabilities for people within that organization to be ready for the future of work. Okay, perfect. So, Shay and Robin, thank you so much for being willing to come on the show. Oh, Appreciate you, you both. Thank you for having thank us. You. And thank you for doing the work that you're doing because I think it's crucial. So, can you start off by telling the audience a little bit about the Future Wise Group? So, we started Future Wise Group in the beginning of 2019. I actually kicked it off with the podcast, Surviving the Future of Work. Um, I was doing a lot of research and talking to people all around the globe, CEOs, HR executives, people in the technology space about what was happening with future of work, I realized that there are a lot of changes and transitions with a lot of the skills that are necessary for us to be able to survive and to thrive in the next few years. And I realized that, you know what, we need to start a company around this. I mean, mm -hmm. there are a lot of changes and people don't realize, like the day-to-day, -day, people don't realize what's happening. They don't know that their jobs are gonna be disrupted by emerging technology, automation. Yes. You know, we're using things like Siri and Uber and don't realize that Alexa, there's- Alexa, over there Alexa, on all these things. <laughs> yeah. And there's all, you know, underlying technology that's there that they're uh, gathering information from us. They're gathering mm -hmm. data to be able to replace us for these jobs. Yes. And so what I realized over the last decade or so is that as individuals, you need to be able to stand out from the competition. Yes. Um, there are certain capabilities and things that you need to become an influencer and an authority. And so what FutureWise Group came about, we said, you know what, how do we put that information out there? How do we make sure that people, society, have the skill sets that they need mm. to thrive with this emerging technology? Um, how do we make sure that policymakers are doing the right things uh, in working with these organizations as well as in the schools to mm. position the next generation for the future of work? And so that's how we came about with the organization in 2019. Um, and so we're a startup and we're pushing that movement forward. Okay, nice, nice fellow startup over here. So, you know, it's nice to have you both here. So in your work so far, what have been, I guess, the top three things that you've seen in today's times that aren't going to be the same in the future that we need to work on? So one thing that I've learned is that there are real issues in college attendance in the future. There's a lot of people who currently attend college and graduate and cannot find a job to help them pay off their debt and live a sustainable lifestyle. She's talking about uh, me. That is a big <laughs> issue, and you're going to see a lot of changes yes. in that in the future. You'll see more people going to trade schools and really uh, embracing skills they have as mm -hmm. opposed to a degree. Mm -hmm. um, another change that we find is you'll see certain occupations that will be gone because automation will take over those industries. Mm -hmm. um, people aren't really talking about that right now, but uh, if you look even in the fast food industry, 
Yep. We have people who work there today, but in the next few years, you'll see more kiosks and you placing your order on a kiosk and then somebody mm-hmm. just giving you your food. And so you have to look at little trends. Even Rolvin and I noticed recently that the mailman or woman in our neighborhood has been delivering the mail less and less. Sometimes mm-hmm. the mail doesn't even come on a certain day. And so there will be replacements. If you're seeing little subtle changes, those changes will be increased 10 times within the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. So for me, those are the top two changes as far as education and job displacements. Um, I don't know, Rolvin, if there is a big trend that you've noticed, but those really stand out for me. Yeah, those are are really two really big ones. And as I talk to... uh, entrepreneurs and companies and HR managers around the globe, mm. what I'm seeing as well is, again, that shift away from needing a college degree. Yes. And so right now, organizations are looking for people that have those skills. And so, you know, you may not necessarily need to go to school to get all that debt. Mm. You know, being able to leverage online learning. So being able to be a continuous learner, I think it's a really something really valuable. Those are some of the changes. They're going to be looking for a different set of skills. So those people that are able to collaborate with yeah. people. Uh, collaboration is a big one because they want to break down silos. Organizations want to be able to move more quickly um, in terms of putting out products and services because we live in a different time. Yeah. You know, if there was a study that was put out by UPS, um, I think back in 2013, and at that time they said, okay, when you place an order, how soon do you expect your order to be at your house? Mm-hmm. Back in 2013, they said, uh, five days will suffice. They did that survey again in 2018, and people expect that they had their package in less than 24 hours. The microwave age. Exactly, yeah. that microwave age. So, you know, with with technology, we have this the capability to do so much with this small device that we have in our hands that mm-hmm. called these phones. People expect things more rapidly, and organizations have to keep up. And they, we don't have those skills. Um, by the time you get out of college, they're saying that those skill sets are antiquated. So another thing is like really looking at the value of a college degree versus having a, someone that's able to learn something more quickly. Yes. So that's one of the other things um, that, you know, new skills, continuous learning and collaboration are important. Yes. And that's one thing I really noticed when it came to education, how we have an antiquated system yeah. and it's not working anymore. So my kind of drive for this organization was to create a non-traditional platform to educate people. Yeah. So I saw the little trend that was going on and I took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And especially one thing that really set off the idea of that was the fact when I saw that Google and Amazon, these big uh, tech companies aren't requiring college degrees anymore. And the fact that you were talking about before with the, um, with the automation, you were talking about fast food industries. So people don't realize like we have a lot of the minimum uh, wages being weight raised. That's going to really push people out and uh, really welcome the AI kiosk into the play too. So people don't realize, you know, Yes, minimum wage is fine, but what are the other, other implications of that, too? Exactly. So for you both, what are some, I guess, five years from now? So you said education, right? So yes. ideally, what do you think is the solution to combat some of the issues that you spoke upon? I think personally, focusing on education, I think colleges really need to partner more with companies Mm -hmm. and find out these new skills that are needed in working with AI, and they really teach those skills. I think colleges should actually have more entrepreneurship programs or even uh, internships. Learning is more about hands-on learning, not just what you read in a book. There are certain colleges that really embrace this concept today, but I think if colleges want to survive, they may need to look to non-traditional routes of getting children really better placed in the workforce prior to getting their degree. If Mm. they really want to get that continuum of kids going to their colleges, Um, that is um, really big. The skill set, as Robin said, that's the key word to the future. It's not a documentation. Mm -hmm. It's about your experience, the hands-on training, the skills that you had. Even today, how many people can relate to saying, I have a college degree, but I can't get a job because I have no experience in that industry. That's a big problem. And colleges definitely need to work closely with these big corporations and see what are the skills, what are the needs, and place these college kids. If they're not Mm -hmm. doing that, they're doing kids a huge disservice. So that's one thing I know the colleges can do. Um, as far as corporations. Yeah. Just touching on that too, like the importance of internships. A lot of mm-hmm. people don't realize that, you know, those are the beginning uh, steps to getting into that. That's how you get that experience that's necessary. Yes. So like one thing I really want to push towards college students, a lot of the internships nowadays are paid. 
However, yes. there are some that are still not paid, but don't overlook the, that free experience because that can be something way bigger in the end that can yes. really be beneficial to you. Yes, Taryn, we can't harp on that enough. Mm -hmm. um, that experience is gold these days. And you have people who've been in the workforce for years in um, one little niche industry, and now they're being changed into a whole nother field yes. within their organization. And they're being a little thrown through the loop because they're scared. They're saying, I didn't go to school and get a degree in this, mm -hmm. but their company is telling them, well, we now need you in this other field over here because AI is taking this position. So we need yeah. you to learn a new skill. And Ravan can talk more about that one. Yeah, that's major. Like I said, I've been in the IT sector for over a decade, and I recently mm -hmm. transitioned into a new role because of what I was doing externally outside of work. But to Shay's point, that was a big issue. A lot of uh, developers and people that are business analysts that were accustomed to doing one job and being an expert in one area, when the, when the organization says, you know what, we need you to show us what other skills you have because no longer do we yeah. need that one particular skill, you know, it was hard for them to shift their mindset, to, you know, to mm -hmm. say that, well, what else can I do? So it's almost like a loss of identity, yes. right? People kind of lose their identity because they went to school for one thing and they thought this was what they were going to be doing all their lives. But the future of work requires us to be more agile. It requires people to be more adaptable to change and susceptible mm -hmm. to that. So one of the major things, aside from just work, is the change of mindset. And yes. so that's a big, it's a big thing that I think uh, even parents, you know, when we think of parents of young children and parents themselves, the approach that they have and the thought that they have towards school and thinking that, you know what, the school is going to put out the blueprint for my, for me and my family. And yeah. I don't have to be in the, involved in that process because they is a roadmap that's you know going to lead to success. We've seen that this 20th century model of education doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily lead to success. We are in a generation that has had, you know, the, the highest number of degrees. We're the most educated generation in history. Yes. Yet, this generation, but yet we don't have, you know, we're, we're locked out of a job. We've been displaced by, you know, uh, the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. A lot of us are not buying homes, and we thought we did everything that was right. So I think changing yep. that mindset to say, you know what, I, I don't necessarily have to follow their path. We need to be able to take our, our lives and our destiny into our own hands and say, I can design my own life. Yes. I can design my career. <clears throat> I can learn, I can do different things and you need to be able to create portfolios of work to say, I've done this. You don't wait till you graduate from high school or college to say, you know what, this is, you know, what, what I, I've done, just my small portfolio of work from school. You need to be, be, be able to do different things and be able to create that mm -hmm. to show the world that, hey, I'm, I'm valuable in so many different places. Yes. And one thing I want to add on to that too is you can't rely on what you did in the past. That's right. You have to stay relevant at all times too. So I want to push that out to you all who are watching this. Um, one thing, Robin, that um, you touch on with your podcast, which is Surviving the Future of Work. Um, go ahead, rate, subscribe, review, all that good stuff. Five stars only. Thank all you, right. Five stars. Yes. <laughs> so one thing you, uh, that I like in particular, that you highlight a lot of companies that are outside of the country. That's right. So why do you think that it's important um, that we know what's going on outside of America? Because I know we have an ethnocentristic view of things yeah. where we feel that, Oh, the American way is the right way, yeah. but there's something to it, and obviously you may know the secret. So, can you speak on that, Taryn? Thank you for that for that plug. I think it's it was really important for me to when I thought about the future of work, I realized that it wasn't something that was only happening here in the United States. This this transition into the fourth industrial revolution, because we've seen industrial revolutions that um, changed the way we work over the last you know 200 years, yes. you know, but it didn't only happen in one country. Mm -hmm. And so I realized, you know what, if I want to be able to get the right information, if I want to be able to provide information that's unbiased, right, if I want to help people make a bigger impact that's global, I need to understand what's happening everywhere around the world yes. and figure out what are some of the challenges that are happening in other places. Maybe it's something that's happening here, or maybe it's something that we have a solution for that they don't have. Mm -hmm. And so I looked at it because the world is becoming smaller. As we look at you know, how we're lever leveraging a lot of the social media platforms, the world has become smaller. Yes. So it's about that collaboration. I felt that that was a great way for me to have that conversation. And, um, you know, like you said, I've spoken to people from India, from Australia, from Sweden, and made a lot of great friends. And, and that's something that's really important for the future of work as well, that collaboration and having that powerful network. Yes. Right, because you, you start to realize that even when you get to a certain level in your career or in your business, you can't get to that next level without having someone that's there to help you open that door. Mm -hmm. that, you, you know, so like mentorship and these things are important. So I said, you know what, let me 
let me start to reach out to people and figure out what's happening and feel and and that kind of leads us to what we're trying to do with with futurewise we're trying to build this global community uh of, of people that are doing amazing things around the globe so when these shifts start to happen yeah. you can reach out to your global network and say you know what i know someone in sweden and i have this capability uh to be able to to run workshops or yeah. to do shows and do videos that they need that that skill set and I can have an opportunity all the way across the globe. Mm. So that's what we're trying to do. Bring that together. Find people that are looking to make an impact and want to have an authority and looking to reach people uh, around the globe. Yeah. Um, and that's how you do that. I think it's okay. important. And uh, one of the things really I think that kind of relates to what you do, it's soft skills. Yeah. You necessarily can't go out to someone on like a cold call. Because I'm not assuming like you're doing yeah. cold calls and whatnot. Yeah, no, no. So like can you just really explain to the people what soft skills are and then also um, what – is it going to really, how is it going really going to impact the future of work? Because, you know, we have a lot of the baby boomers that are up at the higher levels of organizations. And we've always been preached about work, 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 yeah. work. That's how yeah. you get there. Um, necessarily, sometimes you step on the next man's head to get to the next level. Yeah. But we're seeing that right now. You have to be more personable. So, like, can you explain what soft skills are and why they're so crucial for the future of work? Should we take the corporate approach or we want to talk? from we only want real we only want the realness we only want the real i mean it's <laughs> yeah. all real so i'll let shay take it first and then i'll take i'll take okay. it from the, the corporate perspective as well okay i'm gonna dive in first taryn uh and talk about the soft skills with the younger children college students okay. um so soft skills really equate to your level of open communication with others and connecting with other individuals and this is a skill that as a society um, some people have taken for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, I was in the store the other day and a little girl walked in front of me and she had no comprehension of me standing there and saying, excuse me, did not register to her. So if you have children, younger children, older children, or even children in college, you have to really emphasize that you must stay connected with others. Mm -hmm. You have to be trainable. You have to be able to work with others who are not in your community, who maybe don't look like you, yep. but to be able to learn from them, to teach others things about you and your qualities that you have. Mm -hmm. And this is a skill that we're seeing less and less in school. And it starts from the elementary school level all the way to college. Mm -hmm. People are becoming Becoming more introvert and I personally believe that social media has um, an impact on this um, people are not communicating quite as much they're in front of their tablets or their phones and so they're not um, as open to communicate you know um, mm -hmm. they're not as comfortable and this trickles over into the workforce because you're going to be put on teams you're going to have to work with people it may be difficult to work with yes. you know you have to be trainable you have to be approachable uh, for a company you have to always represent yourself mm -hmm. and the organization that you're part of and that's one thing that young kids are not understanding yes. you are a brand Absolutely. I tell my children this all the time. We both do. You're a brand for yourself and you have to walk around and be able to pitch or have somebody be able to communicate and approach you at all times and you mm -hmm. be at your top game. And this is even for young kids. You have to be able to say, excuse me, how are you today? Yes. And just be interested in other people. You know, that's 101 in mm -hmm. soft skills. Um, you know, that... Um, being able to really communicate and being able to learn things and work as a team, that's what's really going to set you apart and you be that project manager versus just someone on that team when you eventually do go to the corporate level. Yes. So um, as far as the corporations, Robin, I'm sure it gets even more intense than that. But. No, I mean, you touch on a lot of important parts um, of the soft skills. So you laid the foundation there. So something that's really important, again, that you touched on is that cultural intelligence. Yes. Um, because the world is, is changing and shifting, you, you, a lot of immigration into the country, uh, a lot of teams that are virtual, you need to be able to communicate and get along with other cultures and understand other cultures mm -hmm. and not, you know, have that egocentric mindset that, you know, my way is the best way, the only way. Yes. Um, that's and no longer going to work. It's, 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 it's no yeah. longer going to work. Um, and so we're seeing that shift in, in corporations. And just last week, I was going through a process. We were trying to figure out what are the most important soft skills for our organization for us to be first to the future, mm -hmm. right? And so, like like you said, empathy. Just having empathy from, from another person. When we're thinking about uh, designing and products and services, you know, using skills like design thinking. Yeah. You know, how do, we, how do I empathize and how do I put myself in the position of someone else uh, when I think about 
when I, what, I, what I'm going to design this product to be. Yeah. You know, when you look at a commercial, people are trying to think about their target audience. Depending on the job you go into or the field or the business that you start, you need to be able to think like your customer. You know, you know Absolutely. when you're doing this, this show right now, you need to be able to think about who's watching it and how do I position it so it makes sense for them. Yeah. And so this has a lot of implications, not just for yourself, but even for making a living in your job or business. Mm -hmm. So emotional intelligence, EQ, these are things that are so important um, for the future. Yes. And emotional intelligence is something that really I tapped into the past couple of years because I had wrote no real understanding of it yeah. until like, I actually needed it. So, you know, having that self-awareness, yeah. being able to truly empathize with people and whatnot. And I saw that once I was able to harness that power and gain a true understanding that it helped me excel, too. Yeah. So I want to make that an important point for you all. Um, I plugged it before, but if y'all want to pay me Emotional Intelligence 2.0, <laughs> there you go. Uh, y'all can, but uh, the book, Emotional Intelligence 2.0, definitely will help you nice. develop the foundation when it comes to building your emotional intelligence. Um, honestly, it's easy to read. Read the first 20 pages, you're good. You're, 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 it's whatever, you know. So one thing I do like to do when I have entrepreneurs, um, and I'll, I haven't really had any startups yet, so I, I'm always interested in seeing how you got to this point. So you spoke about family con. So how did you all, did you all have any, um, did you both have any other endeavors prior to that? Or was this like hit, hit gold with uh, family con and then we're going to go for this. So, so tell us about your journey to get here. Um, I'll let Robin start this journey okay. um, and then I'll jump in. I'll let you initiate. Okay. You know, you know I mean, it's been a long journey. Yeah. I, I say, like, I, I'm glad you looked at the watch because I want to know like how much time do you have. You know, people see individuals with with companies, and you yeah. you kind of they see the success, but they didn't see all the hard work that went into that. And you know what what Joseph Campbell calls the hero's journey. Yes. And we've definitely been going through this journey for over a decade. Mm. Um, I remember we both uh, attended Rutgers University. Graduated like in 2005. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to RU. Don't hate. Uh, uh. <laughs> so we went to Rutgers, and uh, I remember had a few jobs out of college. Right, it took uh -huh. a while. I, re I, I remember living in the basement, trying to figure out how to how am I going to get my first job, and I had yeah. two bachelor's degrees. Right, and so even that was a journey, just getting a first job, let alone starting a business. So um, our first business, I think came around like official business was like 2007. Okay. Um, I started a, a business with, uh, with my roommate, uh, my best friend at the time, and it was an endeavor that we did in, in West Africa. Nice. And so we were trying to provide uh, medical supplies to, to you know, uh, Sierra Leone. Um, at the same time, we Shay and I co-found. We've been together for a while, as you can tell. Okay, okay. High black, school, love, black, yeah, love. black love, black love. I, 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 high, high I see a lot yeah. Okay. And, um, and so we also founded another business that she's going to talk a little bit about. I'm not going to get into that. Okay. And, you know, the crash happened like a year later after we started these found ups. Mm. I went the route of trying to get funding from, uh, you know, uh, investors. Right. So we took that traditional route of starting a business. And yeah. then when we needed that mezzanine funding for the next round of, you know, funding, the crash happened. And because we were relying on someone else's money. Yeah. We lost our funding, and at that time, it was so hard to get back into work. And that was a time period when I had to self-reflect and figure out, what am I going to do? I just started. We just got married. Mm -hmm. um, we found out we had a baby on the way, and it was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And yeah. for me, that's when I started to, you know, do more research about finding self-awareness. Um, started to read a ton of books, mm -hmm. and what what did it mean to, you know, create an online business or have a personal brand? And so over the last decade. You know, it's really been about doing that research. Yeah. And I realized, you know what? I didn't want to put my family or things that people experienced from that uh, Great Recession. Mm. I, I felt like, you know, another one's coming because of this automation. Absolutely. And I said, you know what? We, we need to do something about it. And this time we wanted to position ourselves so we didn't get hit like the last time. And that's one of the reasons why we started uh, FutureWise is really to help people to make sure that they are not relying on an organization or someone else's funding, how do you make sure that you're the organization of you? Yes. That you're a brand for yourself, that you can lose your job and you can walk out there and be able to do a speaking engagement or write your own book or mm -hmm. create your own product or service and not relying on any, anyone else. You know, And so that's, that's the core of what uh, FutureWise is. But at that same time, when we started the family, uh, you know, Shay got into, I said, you know what, you're home with the with the with the kids and we're, as we were building our family over the last few years and i can and then shay can tell you a little bit about her story and how we got to the family con point so to piggyback what Ravan just said um 
it was a big time of self-reflection after the recession, 08, 09. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were really trying to figure out what went wrong because we thought we did everything right. But sometimes you're put in a position, it's inevitable, and then your back is against the wall, and what are you going to do? And I know people in some communities face this more than others, and you just have to be prepared. So um, on my end, I just had our first child, and... um, it was a different type of love and it was a different type of experience. I uh, taught prior to having him and I was uh, working on my master's and we had our son and I'm a very holistic uh, type of uh, mother towards our children. So uh, Robin said, Shay, why don't you write a book? I had a lot of holistic recommendations for parents nice. uh, a lot of out of the box what's the, wait, what's the name of the book we gotta plug it, you, you gotta plug it. <laughs> <laughs> it was called worthless mommy okay go get that go get that and <laughs> um it was actually just a call to action on if you are a parent not just a mother that really installs love and positive energy in your child and it's mm. not just about the material things that you give to your baby it's really about that strong foundation to make them a strong person to have those soft skills all yeah. those qualities that start from day one so it was really call to action. Are you a worthy or worthless parent to your child, even a mm. baby? Um, so I wrote that book. I self-published. It did really well. Okay, okay, okay. I started keynoting. And um, then I started consulting with Babies R Us. Somebody heard nice. me speak. Uh, they approached me. I started giving workshops at different locations mm. um, without crying. We all know Babies R Us is no longer <laughs> here. And Robin said, you know, honey, we should start our own convention. Because as I said, I keynoted and I was speaking and I thought that was a ludicrous idea. But one thing my husband and I can agree with, we don't wait for somebody to write our narrative. We write our own narrative. And if there's one bit of advice I'd like anybody to take away from me today is write your own narrative. You don't wait for somebody to tell you what to do or what industry to go into. So um, we actually, you know, I sat down with a lot of people. Uh, We got the funding, we got the sponsorship Mm -hmm. and we put on family con the first year. It is uh, expo and convention because we do have vendors who are there selling things um, that really help the family. But we also have hands on demos. We have live shows there so it really is the comic con for the families and we focus on health education entertainment and um and technology there so we really like to have big corporations from those fields and teach family information because i personally feel as though families need to be kept abreast of topics that's going on i feel like there are behind the scene discussions that only certain people in america know what's going on Mm -hmm. and then there are other people who find out when it's too late and having children even in college you need to know the latest trends and so that was the moving force for family con it was really implementing you know the trends that are out there the focus point for family so that you as a family can make the best decision Mm -hmm. and then that led us into future wise because Robin had his podcast he's talking to all these entrepreneurs and finding out all these changes and then I'm talking and speaking to schools administrators and companies and finding out that maybe we aren't teaching kids uh, quality education or equipping them with the best skills that they Mm -hmm. need to be successful so together that's when we came up then with um, future wise so even though future wise is new we have been you know we've had successful businesses in the past and it's been a journey as Robin said okay. but it, it's it's been a good journey yeah, I appreciate you both sharing your journey definitely um and one thing I know in particular like those periods of struggle that's where you grow the most and that's where you get gain the wisdom and knowledge that's necessary for you to succeed in the future so being that you all have you know y'all, y'all seasoned in the field a little bit you know even though you're like 22 but uh <laughs> But what, what, exactly, <laughs> you got a little young whippersnapper. <laughs> so, what is some advice that you can um, instill to new entrepreneurs? Because especially when it comes to the future work, the future work is having your own brand, like you all have been preaching so far. Yeah, one of the things that I, you know, some advice for entrepreneurs is really like we've been talking about is is leveraging um, collaboration, being able to collaborate. Don't think that you have an idea that you know um, don't have a scarcity mindset. 
uh, you know, you want to think in abundance and be able to connect with other people that may be in your industry that uh, may be, be able to help you. It's really hard trying to be a solopreneur and, and do a startup by yourself. And obviously, in the beginning, you're trying to learn and figure things out. Um, but you, you definitely want to get around a community of other people that are doing something similar, maybe not the exact same thing, but something, something similar or something adjacent that may be, be able to, to share some wisdom with you. Find mentors, people that have maybe, um, you know, 10 steps ahead of you have, that have done it in the past uh, that can give you some advice and lead you down the right path. Because you don't want to spend all your time trying to figure things out again on your on your own. It's better to have someone that's done it before mm -hmm. or done something similar so they can, you know, help you take a few bigger jumps because entrepreneurship is a journey. Um, it, it really is. And, you know, it seems sometimes in the beginning that it's going to be a straight path. And then there's some dips in the road and sometimes you can be sidelined and like turns. some turns. <laughs> All that. And even though you may be trying to make a difference and trying to make an impact, and you're like, this is going to be great because I'm trying to help people. Um, it doesn't always go like that. It's really sometimes a test from the universe to see how bad do you really want it and what type of impact are you really trying to have? Because like you said, um, these these things are thrown, some curveballs are thrown at you because it's something that you need to learn. And I realized that once I was able to realize that these, um, the roadblocks that I faced were really lessons and I was able to re reframe how I looked at some of the problems that were starting to come up as an opportunity or a lesson, that's when I was able to become more successful because I said, okay, there's a lesson that's need, needed to be learned right here. What is it? Once I was able to extract that information and put it back into what I was doing, that's when I started to gain more traction more quickly. Mm -hmm. okay. um, one tidbit of advice I'd like to leave to parents and younger children are, as I said earlier, write your own narrative. Do not wait for somebody else to tell you what you should be focusing on in school. Mm -hmm. If you really want to be successful, one thing I like to tell um, younger kids, college or even elementary school kids, figure out a world problem and figure out how you're going to be the leader in solving that problem. And mm -hmm. without a doubt, you will be successful and an expert in that field. And really honestly, look in diverse fields. Um, Taryn, I feel like sometimes kids all focus on the same fields. A lot of people want to do the same jobs. Mm -hmm. But we have... all not going to be in the NBA. <laughs> I know. Uh, that's one example. But we have climate control, which is an issue. Some people believe in it or not, but it's undeniable that our climate is changing and yes. we can use more marine biologists. We can use more kids who know how to solve these issues or maybe be inventors mm -hmm. that help. If there's more rain, then maybe we can invent something that, you know, uh, would help those in society when you're faced with these issues. Yes. So think outside of the box. Uh, if you have a child in college or a younger child, really sit down with them and talk to them about, a problem that needs to be solved and what they can do mm -hmm. to help that problem. And there will be nobody that can stand in your way. Yes. So yes. that is that advice right there. That's what I want kids to really focus and parents and take back home and reflect on. You see why I'm married? Okay. Okay. See. <laughs> see. You, gotta, even you got a strong woman next to you. That's only going to help you get forward, you know, but Shay and uh, Robin, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Definitely Taryn. appreciate it. So can you let everyone know how they can reach out to you both, where they can find the podcast, and what events you have coming up? Yeah, so they can reach out to me. You can go to LinkedIn. I'm very heavy on LinkedIn. You can go uh, at Rolvin Coke, and you spell my name R-A-U-L. If he was a rapper, that would be a and mean name. I know. <laughs> you, you know, um, so Rolvin Coke, that's on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, the podcast, if you want to listen to the podcast, it's Surviving the Future of Work uh, podcast. You can find that on Anywhere you listen to podcasts, so that's that's everywhere. Well, we have a college tour coming up. Um, nice. uh, we are currently working with colleges, C-suite level executives from corporations mm -hmm. and entrepreneurs, and we're trying to bridge the gap on uh, the skills that everyone needs and how we can create more jobs and more entrepreneurs and fill these positions within companies. Nice. So uh, we're really having sit-down symposiums and hard discussions, but discussions that have to be made and how we can connect 
those three sectors in society and really fulfill those positions. And we also want to start talking um, about alternatives. If people can't always afford to go to school, yeah. how they can maintain a sustainable lifestyle with a skill or trade and what they can do with the corporations or organizations or how they can start their own business. Mm -hmm. They can write their own narrative. If they have a skill, they can jump on Coursera and learn something or they can um, jump on Fiverr and provide a talent that they have and start yeah. making their own money. So it's all about really connecting everyone mm -hmm. um, to be aware of what they can do. And they're in the driving lane. They're driving their own vehicle. Okay. okay, they're not waiting for the automation to drive them, yes. you know, um, and then uh, we have some speaking engagements coming up. Um, we're working with various colleges. So the tour is amazing. And we're working on a summit coming up soon, too. We're really excited about that. Nice. That's still in the works, though. But between college tour and the summit, um, big thing. So we're looking to connect with you all. So we hope to see you soon. You okay. too, Taryn. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> so please make sure you reach out to them. Rate, review, sub subscribe the podcast. And, you know, there's, I'm sure it's going to be some great stuff and great information at these events. So please attend. Thank you so much for tuning in. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. Real Talk Session Series, the revolution will be digitized. It's PC simple, the revolution will be digitized.